Week four, stretch flow. We're gonna blur the lines. Those of you that remember fuel light, because today we're gonna to be going into some hip and spine flow activation. Then we're gonna be going into some deep hip stretching. We're gonna finish that off with a little core work. For objective, aside from recovering from the week, this can be done as a standalone workout. You can also look at the timestamps below. So if you just wanna get into the deep stretches after workout, you can go there. But if you are doing it standalone, you're gonna want the body weight work and, and flow to start warming yourself up because that's gonna help you get into those stretches a little bit more. And then we're gonna finally finish this off with a little core activation. This is just gonna help wake the body up for the rest of the day, especially if you're doing this as standalone. Follow along and enjoy. Starting on your back, we're gonna go into some, first, just some relaxation and spine activation. So what I mean by that is you wanna get the arms straight overhead and initially your, your spine is gonna extend. And what you want you to do is pull the lower back down to the ground. So we're gonna do some reverse cat cows. Typically we do this in a hands and knees position. And now as I just get thinking about my position, I'm getting my backs of my hands on the ground, heels on the ground, and then push the low back into the ground and then let it relax. Push the low back into the ground, let it relax. Okay, so we get a different angle to get the spine. You're gonna be tilting your pelvis. So I'm tilting the pelvis forwards as the, sp the spine extends here. And then as I flex it, I tilt the pelvis backwards. Just wanna get this activation. Feel the core working, especially when you pull that back down to the ground. Some cues are pull the belly button down to the spine. Really, I just want you to flatten your back while keeping the backs of your hands and heels on the ground for another two and one. Good, now we're gonna lie on the side. So from this position, go lower leg is straight, top leg is bent. I am going to hold the top leg down with the opposite arm, so right knee, left arm. I'm gonna take my now free arm and I'm gonna rotate over the head gently and I'm looking at that hand as I rotate my head comes off the ground and my head comes onto the ground each time I reach a little bit further get a little bit higher then he's going to join me exhale the arm comes up overhead inhale when it comes down inhale through the nose exhale either mouth or nose, reaching straight up. Let's go three more. Three, two, and one. Switch over onto the other side. Top leg bent, lower leg straight. Opposite arm holds the knee down. And we're gonna bring our, begin our rotation. So inhale as you come down, exhale as you get overhead. Notice the difference in range of motion now. You should feel, especially on the second side, we loosened up quite a bit on the other side. Let's get to that point here. Go at my pace, you can go slower. I'm actually going a little bit faster than I typically go. No particular reason. Just following my breath. Let's go another three. Two. And one. Roll onto your stomach, and then get onto your hands and knees. Child's pose, rock. So left and right, feel the stretch through the lats. As I rock left and right, forehead's just hovering above the ground, but down towards the heel. Walk your fingers out, feel that length from the tailbone all the way to the tips of your fingers. Continue to breathe in through the nose and out. 
Okay, so this next part here, we're gonna keep the chin tucked. We're gonna round the spine. We're gonna go into a cobra here, open up the fingers. So the fingers are pointing out, thumbs are forwards. Allow my hips to sink down. I'm gonna bias one side by leaning those hips to the one side and then let those hips fall to the other side. One more time each side. And the other side. And into a tabletop. I'm gonna drop the hips down to one side, make sure the knees are directly underneath the hips. And look over the opposite shoulder. And when I see and teach this in person, the tendency is to allow the hips to sag forward. You want to avoid that. Keep the hips over top of the knees. Look over that opposite shoulder that rotation through the spine two one and now into the hips so sit on your bum windshield wipers I'm gonna go over and back get the full shin to come down to the ground so you want your knee and shin down to the ground adjust your feet to whatever angle you need to get them there. And as you rotate, what we wanna work on is less rotation with the torso. So right now I'm rotating my torso with my hips, but as I loosen up, I now wanna try and keep my belly button facing forward. So my torso is not moving as much. It creates a little more, more torsion through the hips. All the way in through the nose and out through the mouth. So in through the nose and out through the nose helps when it's a slow and controlled. For moving a little faster, in through the nose, out through the mouth, allows the breath to pick up a little bit faster. I am tight here, doing a few more reps than we typically do just to help loosen up. We're gonna do another two more. Two and one into a 90-90 position. You really work on extending this back leg behind you as much as possible. So I extend this position behind me, start to feel it getting tension through the front, out the outside of that front leg. I wanna reach forwards, the opposite arm, palm comes up, head is down, and then I'm gonna come back up to center. So my spine is now neutral, and now I'm going to flex that spine, palm reaches up, come back up to center. Breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Really this hip and spine flow can help prime the deep stretch. Another three. We want to exhale into the stretch. And we're going to switch sides. Lock that leg behind, extend that leg behind. I've got my arms supporting me. In the front, notice how my fingers are pointing out. This puts less pressure on the wrist. Back is straight. Now I'm going to reach. Exhale, palms up. Inhale as I come back. It's one side tighter than the other, especially after we've gone a few more reps per side here because these reps per side are going to first be tight when you start and then loosen up do you notice a difference especially some of those landmine rotations and other rotational work we do might be more dominant on one side which affords you a little more range of motion another two and one 
Okay, cross-legged here. So we're gonna do some cross-legged switches. So find a position where you begin to feel the stretch. So for some of you, you can get your knees right down to the side, put your knees right down to the side. Then I'm going to reach back the same position we were just in. I wanna hinge, and then I'm gonna come over, and I'm gonna switch. So I'm going from that 90-90 position, hinging, and then switching. So we're gonna first do this using your arms for support. Okay, this first part of the hip flow, use your arms for support. That includes coming up, pushing off onto the other side. You can always come back to using the arms. But for some of you, this is gonna be more of a struggle than others, it's gonna be a struggle for me. So what we're gonna do now, I'm in this 90-90 position. We're gonna continue this, but I want my arm off the ground. I can bring the other leg forwards. And only when I get into the 90-90 position, do I hinge. I come up, arms off, switch sides and then hinge, arms up, switch sides, hinge. Now if you can do this, and we're gonna try this now, no hands, come down to the ground. Make a fist, create some tension, hinge, your 90-90 is not gonna look as good, that's fine. Wake it up those hips, oh, a lot tighter on that side. Keep the breathing going. Two more. And good, right back to center. I'm in my cross-legged position here. I wanna rotate, put my hands on the ground, one hand on the knee, create that rotation. Exhale as I get there. Inhale as I come around. set here. All right, let's go into the adductors. Frog position. So knees nice and wide. I want to find a position that gets equal tension on left and right adductors or groin. And then I'm just going to pulse. I pulse back and forth as I'm pulsing. I want to get a little bit deeper on each one. Feel that equal stretch into the adductors. If it's not, adjust your legs, push the hips back, and then back up. We're gonna add a rotation here. I'm gonna bring my left foot and left hand. So I'm gonna bring my left foot, rotate, left hand, and then I alternate. Right leg, sink back, left leg. Get a little internal rotation through the hips. Sink back. Inhale as I sink back. Exhale as I rotate. Two more. So it's an example of one of those faster paces where you want that exhale through the mouth. Okay, so I'm sinking back now. I'm gonna push my hips back, find a bit of a static stretch here through the adductors and I'm gonna get my hands out in front, wedge myself so I can't move. I'm gonna reach one arm underneath, palm comes up. I'm gonna thread the needle, reach as far as I can, keeping my support arm relatively straight. I wanna reach and then come back up to center and rotate. Reach, exhale on that reach. Inhale on the way up. Last one. And back to center. Readjust here, other side.
two more. Okay, last part of this flow. One knee forwards, or one foot forward, one knee back. Let's get a line with your hands and toes. And we're gonna circle using that front hip, circle with the knee, drawing the circles. Okay, just feel that stretch. It's gonna be, depending again, where you're tight, you might feel the stretch in a different spot than where I feel it. And work, rotate circles in one direction and rotate circles the other direction. Right now I'm in the, feel in the groin and a little bit in the back hip flexor. You might feel the, the high hamstring, really doesn't matter. I've got my knee over top my toes. And then from this position here, I'm gonna bring my back knee off of the ground and I want to press my knee backwards. So I'm gonna straighten the leg as much as I can. This is as much as I can. I feel that stretch in through the hamstring and then I bring the knee back down. So I wanna stretch, feel that stretch with the hamstring and then knee back down. Now it's important here is you don't need to force the knee straight. We just wanna feel that stretch, the back of the leg, alternating with the knee coming down and the knee straightening at the top. Another six, sprinter's hamstring start, five. Sprinter's hamstring stretch, three, two, one, knee stays on the ground. I'm gonna push my knee out, look over opposite shoulder, and then rotate, look up at the ceiling. A lot of spinal rotation here. Push the knee out, look over the opposite shoulder, rotate up, but all in different positions. So when we try these rotations in different positions, we target, although it's spine, we lengthen whatever that area is that we've pinned. So right now we pin the hip, that back hip flexor, so you rotate, create a little bit more tension based on where that pinning occurs. Just a different angle. Two. Last one, and one. Good. Switch that up onto the other side. Knee is on the ground. I demo from this position. See the circles. The knee is moving in a circle that's coming from the hip. Small circles. I keep my foot on the floor. So I got my tripod foot, big toe, little toe, heel. Circles in one direction, then change direction. Circles in the other direction. All right, we're gonna go into the hamstring now. Push down to the ground with my fists or hands. Straighten that front leg as much as I can. Feel that stretch in the high hamstring. And through the nose, we get in the hip flexors. Exhale as you straighten. Two more. Knees on the ground, hand on the knee, rotate, look over top, back shoulder, and then look up to the ceiling, alternating. Rotate up to the ceiling. So with these stretch flows there's a static component almost all the time but with some motion and this is good if you're doing it on its own so if you have a workout finish the workout that's where static stretching can be most beneficial is after you've already warmed everything up but this is designed to be standalone so you're only doing this 
Get that heart rate up a little bit, but movement. Last one. And good. Okay, that's the flow portion. We're gonna go into some static stretching now. So the first one we're gonna go into, we're gonna follow the same path that we did with the 90-90. Okay, and now we are going to go into a static stretch here. We're gonna be holding on to this 90-90 position. So really try and pin yourself down. I pin the heel down and I'm going to fold myself forwards. Now, as I fold myself forwards, I'm staying active through the spine. I'm not just rounding it to get the chest down. And on my breath, on the exhale, I wanna get a little bit lower each time. Inhale, exhale, pick up that slack. Exhale, pick up the slack. Okay, and there's gonna to get to a point where we can't go any further, and that's fine. When you exhale, it's still picking up little micro amounts of slack. So in through the nose. Just relax into this. I'll cue you on the timing. Focus on your position, isolating that hip. In through the nose. This is when you can focus on exclusively breathing through the nose. Halfway there. If you need to, you can move that back leg a little further back. Create a little more tension. Hinge, keep that front foot forward from sliding. Last 30 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on out of it. Let's switch sides. Let's find that 90 on the other side. And then let's begin the same process. Okay, notice you won't be able to get as low initially. Keep that back straight. Tension through that front of the hip outside of the leg right now that's on the ground in front of you. And just focus on that breath. In through the nose. Out through the nose. Up that slack with the exhales.
minute and a half in. Heart rate recovers in this point. Not that it got up very high. But especially with the breath work, the static stretching. The mind begins to wander. Kind of bring it back to the breath. And see if you can try and get that heart rate to slow down. It's a Benny big stretch. 30 more seconds. <laughs> Last 15. And five, four, three, two, one. Slowly up. Next one is into the frog. Sink the hips back. Now on this one, we are going to fully relax. So don't worry about keeping that spine straight. I want to get the forearms down to the ground. If you can keep it straight on the ground, great. What we want to do though is create some tension so the back is not just completely rounded. I'm going to do this by keeping my neck in line with the spine. So right now, my back is actually pretty straight, but I'm not focusing on staying up in an extended position. I want to get those forearms down to the ground. I'm going to sink the butt back. Equal stretch between left and right sides. And then I'm just going to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Right, three minutes on here as well. In through the nose, out through the nose. And as you exhale, see if you can pick up that slack a little bit more by sinking the hips down. You can also help with tension by moving your forearms back towards your hips. Keep that spine aligned with your back. Play around with where you feel that tension by moving, shifting your shoulders or your torso from one side to the other. See if you are even. If you're not, okay, shift to the side that makes it a little bit more even. So right now I feel like I've shifted to my right a little bit just to even the stretch out in the hips and that's fine. Probably am tighter on one side of my hips than I am on the other. more seconds. Slowly come out of this one. Forearms forwards. Support yourself with your hands and then bring one leg in and the other leg in. And all these muscles after this period of time are gonna be elongated quite a bit. Okay, the next part, last stretch here. We're going into a 
saddle. So I use a wall ball here. You don't, you can use a pillow. You don't actually need anything. This is just more for my ability. And what I want to do here is I'm curling up again, a mat underneath my toes. So if you pause this to grab something you can put behind you, or if you curl up your mat, the idea here is I just create a little bit less tension on my ankles and I get set up here. Knees, find a comfortable position, whether they're narrow or wide, it doesn't matter too much. And for those of you who've done the saddle with me, you know there's three phases that we go through here. So phase number one, hands are behind you, press the hips up. Okay, feel that pull on everyone, regardless if you're going into phase two or three after this start in phase one, this is gonna allow you to get your position set and not have to do anything afterwards. So as I get this position set, push the hips up, feel the stretch through the quads, extend those hips. If you're ready, okay, and only if you're ready, then you can come up or down at any point through these. Just maintain that extension through the hips. We're gonna go into phase two, which is forearms down onto the ground behind you. Okay, phase two, forearms down on the ground behind you. And then if you're ready, phase three is right down to the ground or to whatever object you're on. For me, it's the ball. Allows me to relax in this stretch based on my ability. So I call this maybe a phase 2.5. If you're really in a full phase three, your whole back is down onto the ground. And it's not that you are a better human. If you get into a lower phase, it really just should be going at what is comfortable for you. Let's settle into this. In through the nose, out through the nose. In through the nose, out through the nose. It's better to stay in one position so that you can maintain for the whole three minutes than it is to be bouncing back and forth. Pace yourself. In through the nose and out through the nose. Deep, slow breaths. I'm slowing my breath down, going four seconds in. Four seconds out. And continuing there. If I can go up to five, I'm gonna try it. Nothing should feel forced. Don't feel like your shoulders are coming up to your ears. It should be relaxed. So find the most time you can take breathing in through the diaphragm. Let it fall on the way out through the nose. Twenty seconds left. Another three, two. One, slowly come out of this. Ooh, all the stretches, I'm gonna settle into that one the most. I'm gonna tuck my toes under, go into a down dog, just a counter stretch, get a little pedal out. Okay, a deep stretch done. Let's move on to the core now. So this isn't gonna be a dedicated core workout, rather we just wanna work on some movement. Okay, a little core flow here. Get it activated and find some good positions. So we can't state, understate the importance of the plank and how important this is for all of the positions because it's about keeping a braced position while being able to breathe. So let's get into that front, that forearm plank, 
palms are down. I want my forearms parallel to each other. And I wanna just engage the core. I'm getting a little shake right now and I'm just waking it up. And now from this position, I'm gonna roll onto my side of my forearm into a side plank. And I just wanna get stacked here. Find some breath. And then roll back to center and on to the other side. Okay, finding that stacked position. So what's good about me talking and finding this is it's forcing me to really breathe through the diaphragm. You're not talking, but I want you to focus on breathing through the diaphragm. Okay, back to that front plank position. Now I'm gonna go into a dolphin pike here. I'm gonna push the hips up and then come back down. Challenge without shoes, you begin to slide. So just go nice and slow from the front plank to the dolphin plank. Try and stay up this whole time, but if you have to go down, that's fine. And now on to the side. Now from this side position, we're gonna go Copenhagen style. So I'm gonna get my top leg is gonna be on the ground, bottom leg is off the ground. Okay, I'm holding that Copenhagen position. And breathe. Put that leg back down. I'm gonna roll over to the other side. You know, Copenhagen on the other side. One more breath. Now I'm gonna go into a tall plank. From this tall plank position, I'm in through the hands. I'm gonna walk into a beast. Hands into the shoulders. In through the nose, out through the nose. Now I'm gonna go under switch. Okay, a little break there from the core. So I wanna find this position. Shoulder is away from the ear. Holding on to this crab position here. I'm gonna go extension, extended through the hips. I've rotated through the shoulder, externally rotated through the shoulder, press those hips up, hand across the chest, butt down, under switch, back into the beast. Let's go under switch on the other side. Screw the shoulder into the socket in our crab. Find your breath, press the hips up, screw that shoulder into the socket, arm across the chest, really extend those hips. Come back down. Back to the beast. Okay, hands a little narrower, feet a little wider. Let's go tap, alternating. Keeping that back straight. Two more. Hands back into the shoulders. Knees under the hips, scapular push up, 10. If you're faster than me, just hang out with the beast. Don't put those knees down. Three, two, one. Let's go under switch. We're gonna go full crab reach now. Okay, a lot of times I'm seeing people rush this. So I'm just taking my time here so you can understand the importance of getting the shoulder stability, understanding the extension through the hips while simultaneously externally rotating the shoulder. So I wanna screw that into the socket. Now I'm gonna reach the hand over, bring it down to the fingers, look down at those fingertips, press the hips up, hold this position, and then come back into the crab, under switch, other side. Hold the crab, screw the shoulder in the socket, press the hips up, Screw the shoulder in the socket even more, and then reach. Fingers, come back. Under switch, we're gonna rock. But back to the heels, arms overhead, tall plank. Loaded beast, that tall plank, the beast rock. Quads, five, four, Three, two, and one. Let's go. Side plank from the tall side plank. 
arm up, stay stacked. Another three, two, one. Pump that tall plank, rotate the other side. Five, four, three, two, one. Tall plank. It's a fun one. Now going to go climber, slow and controlled. Knee to the forearm, touch that forearm. Stay in this plank, we're almost done. Alternating side to side, five, four, three, two, one. Down dog. Whew. There's our first little rest, right? You haven't put your knees down. You haven't come out of it. You've just played along. Pedal out. Finish up back down to that front plank. Arms parallel. Three, two, one, and down. Good. You hold it up the whole time? That's okay. You can do it again. Finish where we started. Going into our child's pose. Butt back to the heels, arms overhead. Feel that stretch through the lats. In through the nose, out through the nose. And good. Nice work. Finish off a little heat there, just a little bit. Ready for the day, recovered from last week. Do bits and pieces of this throughout the week. If you feel like there are parts of this that just spoke to you more than others, you can do those stretches on their own after the workout, any of the workouts that you're doing, or you can do this as a standalone as well. Enjoy the rest of your week.